Try me. I'm delicious. Hold the smile. Hold the smile. Hold the smile. Hold the smile. Got it. Okay, next setup. Susie, great fun. Clear the set, everybody. Let's go. Let's go. Clear the set, everybody. Let's go. Let's go. Susie, that means you. Bye. <laughs> Such great relish. I gave Morris Levy, baby, the old heave ho. You should have seen his face. Wasn't he the guy that just last week you intended to spend the rest of your life with? Say, Morris Levy, you even replanned his whole life, not to mention his whole house. I never liked that part town. <laughs> Are you okay, Susie? <laughs> yeah. Well, sure. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Unforgivable sin to be ambitious. It is if you don't have an ounce of humor. Come on. Talk about the guy I'm living with. Okay. Okay. I didn't say anything. <laughs> Listen, whatever you do, don't look. <laughs> but no. He's behind you over there. Who? The guy I'm going out with Friday night. The table to your left, dude. He's with a guy and a girl. He's got a V-neck sweater. Are you all right? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Are you okay? <sighs> wow. Looks like it's been one of them days. <laughs> Lately, it's always one of them days. Don't even get a good evening kiss. You're too ugly. <laughs> Quarterback Jerry King back. Here's the blitz. The blitz is on. Watch the blitz. King fades back. It's 
sitting with. Yeah, sounds like Pierce. What are you doing? Listen, would you please? Yeah, what? And the girl was smoking a cigarette. Mm -hmm. Smoke stopped in midair. And the music stopped. <sighs> Everything just slowed down and stopped. Just kidding. What did Pierce do? She stopped too. She was frozen. <laughs> well, Pierce wasn't talking? Jason! <laughs> What, is that a punchline? Is this listen, a joke? Would you listen to me? Yeah. And then when everything had stopped and no one was moving, a man smoothed his head. He was bald. What's so funny? You look fantastic. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Yeah, I'm all ears. Mm -hmm. Said our girl was smoking and the uh, smoke stopped in the air and then everything <laughs> slowed down and stopped and Pierce lost her tongue and the bald man smoothed his hand over his hair. See, I heard every word. Mm -hmm. But it's true. Well, I didn't say I didn't believe you, did I? But you don't, I can tell. Would you, uh, come up here and, uh, cuddle into me? Oh, you rat, you don't believe me. It's so good. <laughs> Sound like a crazy, don't I? <laughs> Sound sexy and wonderful, turn out the light. What about dinner? Later. <laughs> Hey, Jason. What? Your steak will be ready in two minutes. Okay. Put a squidge of garlic on mine, would you? I did. No light on the number one fire bottle. Roger, I read that. I'm going to try to snuff it, to pressurize the aircraft. Getting a your SAS light. We've got to set her down fast. She's starboard heavy. I know. She's starting to roll. We're in a blackout. I can't hold her, Joey. She's getting away from me. She's rolling. Help me, Joey. Hold her. I can't stop her. feeling today? Much better. Wow, well, that's good. Had me worried last night. Thought you were having a heart attack or something. Hey, I left the new Wheatley campaign somewhere. Did you see it? I put it behind your desk over there. Oh, good. You know, Jason, what happened last night was really bizarre. Did you pour me a cup of coffee, honey? I'm running late. Back at 145. No sugar. It was almost as if... Hey, Bill Lasky was asking about you yesterday. I think he's taking quite a fancy to you. You gotta have him over to dinner sometime. Doesn't hurt to butter up the boss. Jason, I'd like to talk to you about last night. Okay. Well, we'll talk about it as soon as I get home, all right? You were so real and frightening. Like a plane was actually crashing in our kitchen. Suze, you know what we both need? Is a weekend in Carmel. Think about it. Bye.
Tony, you're selling hamburgers, not courses. Loosen it up, Susie, you are late. I'll be just Move a Talk to you for a minute. Hi, baby. How's it going? Uh, listen, it's a little hectic right now. I'm going bananas with this Wheatley campaign. Did you see the papers this morning? No, why? There was a plane crash. It happened last night. You're kidding. It was the one I heard. <sighs> Susie, now listen, it's a coincidence. Jason, I'm telling you. It's the one I heard. Look, can we save this for tonight? Uh, uh, things are popping right now. I've got to talk about it now. It's serious. We'll, we'll talk about this tonight. Okay, I promise. Jason. Jason. Jackson. Henry Jackson. Spelt with an I. Excuse H E N R I. Excuse me. He was supposed to be on flight 802, but. Excuse me. He must have missed it. I mean. Right this way. Come in. Well, if you just go to counter three, I'm sure they can help you. What about the cockpit tapes, Mr. Grace? No comment. Have you found them yet? No comment. Well, you're going to release any transcripts? No comment. It went down in that industrial area out by LAX. You know, lots of political influence. They've been pushing pretty hard. I've uh, held them off so far. Good man. Joey. Did anyone call the pilot Joey? Was it a nickname? Uh, I can't answer that question. Um, maybe you should go to personnel. Or... Oh, Mr. Cushing. Mr. Cushing, there's someone you maybe should talk to. Um, I can't quite make heads or tails of... Well, shh. Hi. Ben Cushing, National Transportation Safety Board Investigator. Can I help you? I hope so. What's the matter? I think I heard a conversation between the pilot of that plane that crashed, and I, I guess his co-pilot. <laughs> I don't quite understand. How did you hear this? I, I don't know. I just, 
just heard it. Well, we'll let, uh, let that go for a minute. Um, what did you hear? Well, the plane was in trouble. And the pilot was called Joey. Look. Look. I'm frightened. I don't know how I heard it. I mean, I'm having strange things happen. I mean, weird sensations, like hearing and seeing unexplainable things. <laughs> ben. Cushing. Uh, yeah, yeah, just a minute. Um, look, would you mind? This is my assistant, Ted Beasley. Uh, yeah, I'm going to ask him to help you. I do it myself, but, uh, you know. Ted, um, as soon as you get her story down, get her together with John Povey. Would you do that for me, please? I think he should see her. Okay. Ted will take good care of you. Thank you. Uh, miss, step right over here. Do you uh, mind if I use one of these? They, uh, <laughs> they save on secretaries. I want to give you John Povey's address. We worked together a while back on an American cargo plane that had disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. He's an astrophysicist who's, uh, who's into psychic research. Okay. Let's uh, start from the beginning. Get me another refill, sweetheart. Huh? Want me a glass of wine, please? Sorry, what did you say? Sorry. Okay. Now, what's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing's wrong. It's just a million miles away. Well, something's bothering you. What, are you still mad at me because I hung up on you? <laughs> what are you doing? No, I'm not mad at you. I've forgotten all about it. What is it? I went to the airlines today. Jason, I just had to ask some questions. Look, I know you don't believe in psychic things, but I just had You're to... right, I don't. Please, Jason. Susie. Look, now, don't start getting hysterical on me like all your dancer friends always running off the fortune tellers It's not the same thing. This is different. How? How is it different? This is a real problem, Jason. Something actually happened to me. <sighs> oh, come on, honey. Now, you keep going on like this, and you're going to make yourself crazy. It makes me crazy when you don't listen to me. Oh, stop. But I mean it, baby. You're going to spook yourself. I hate it. When you call me baby like that. Yeah. Well, as best I can do, I haven't had any acting training. The airline guy believed me. Yeah, well, why not? He probably wanted to make it with you. Thanks, Jason.
About four years, give or take a few months. I'm a victim of the English brain drain. <laughs> Sold out for the filthy American dollar. In here. Okay. Well, I take what is happening to you very seriously. I think it's serious. Do you understand me? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Now, let's talk about what is happening to you and why and... Excuse me. Yes. John, we ran back the Daltite and there's still no significant pre-am count. Then uh, I'd say we'll either run into the DB factor or uh, oh, Houston screwed up. Can the gods be wrong? Sorry, we're up against a deadline. We're always up against a deadline. Now, we can agree, can't we, that you seem to be getting messages from somewhere outside yourself. Yes, I'm... I'm I think so. I don't... Now, stay with me. Everybody, you, me, everybody, all of our lives receive messages from somewhere outside ourselves. Are you aware of this? I don't think so. Well, most people aren't. See, generally, messages aren't strong enough to get through to the conscious mind. So we experience them as premonitions, hunches, things like that. I know those feelings. Uh, of course you do. So does everyone else. But most people repress them, push them down, just like they repress dreams. What's happening to you could happen to anyone, anytime. One day, a leak can occur. And messages begin to come through. And generally, we experience them as dreams. But if the psychic power is strong enough, they come through into the real world. Now, the egg falling... And the sound of the plane crashing, that was precognition, sensing of future events. Technically, that's precognitive audio hallucination. You following me? As carefully as I can. I, I don't have the connection yet. But there's a possibility that your visions foreshadow an impending personal experience. I think they want me. Oh, stay in touch with Cushing. He's a good man. I think it's coming up red alert, Mr. Povey. We're always on a red alert. Well, where would life be without a red alert? I can't thank you enough, Mr. Povey, really. Good. Then don't. to listen to this. I'm going to try to snuff it, to pressurize the aircraft. It's the cockpit tape. Now listen. Over the screaming, he said, I'm going to try to snuff it, to pressurize the aircraft. SAS light. We've got to set her down fast. Then the other one said, we're getting a yaw SAS light? And something else. I... Wait a minute. Then someone else said, we've got to set her down. Lunch. Susie, if you don't mind my saying so, you look like Nuria, dancing in a bathtub. I'm sorry. Just get with it, honey. Shape up or ship out. Suze, you're knocking your head against a brick wall. I mean, so what if you can't be Miss Corporate Image 1979? Try it alone. Different dancing partners aren't that bad, you know. You can't just give up. The instant things aren't going well. 
least I can't. Mm. Hi. Remember me? Yes. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> uh, can I have a word with you, uh, Private? Sure. I'll be in the corner doing my nails. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I, uh, I hope you don't mind my coming here like this. Uh, no. I won't get in trouble or anything, will I? <laughs> yeah, well, what's a USAS like? Excuse me? <laughs> the other one said we're getting a YASAS light? I just heard it. I don't have any idea what that means. Your stabilization augmentation system. I don't suppose that uh, rings any bells, huh? <sighs> we found the cockpit voice recorder, that crashed airliner. The recorded conversation was exactly as you heard it. Everything, every word, every detail. <sighs> <laughs> My boyfriend's beginning to think I'm a little strange. Of course, it doesn't surprise me that no one believes me. I believe you. Thanks. What I'm going to tell you now hasn't been made public yet, so you can't say anything. That plane crash was not an accident. Somebody put a bomb in it. Your um, psychic experience might give me a lead. I, I could use your help. Okay. The vision, uh, you, know, you know, the egg. Um, was that isolated? I mean, was that the only one you had? I don't... I don't know why. But there has been one occurrence. A bald man. I keep seeing the same bald man. I, he was in Coles. Bald man. Well, look, um, I'd like you to keep in touch with me. Phone me if you have another of those visions, okay? Did you do that? Yes, I will. Oh, and I met John Povey. Oh. He's a big help. Thanks. Yeah, he's uh, very knowledgeable in these areas. Well, thank you for giving me your time. Thank you. Keep in touch. <laughs> for your messages? How'd it go? Uh, FAA Regional, FAA Washington, Department of Transportation, Secretary of Transportation, FBI Local, your brother. Brother? We've got most of the insurance reports now. A couple of passengers had uh, pretty hefty policies, but they've had them for years. Nothing there. We've got last minute airport insurance. I don't suppose there's anything there either. No. I've got something, though. You know, we've been going crazy trying to figure out how the bomb got on the plane. Yeah. It's not warm. Anyway, well, there was an incident the day of the crash. According to security records, it was quote, unquote, forestalled before it happened. It's warm enough. It's the warm guards enough. saw a man climbing over the wall into the uh, control baggage area. He got away. He was climbing over the wall into the controlled area? That's what the man says. Are you telling me that nobody worked on the theory that he was climbing out of the controlled area? No. Was he bald by any chance? How in the hell did you know that? Do they have video on him? Yeah, but not so that you could identify him. We're looking at the tape from camera two. The control baggage area is behind us. Here's the underground entrance to the terminal. Now, in just a second, he'll come out here. There he is. Yeah, hold it. Freeze it right there. All right, let it roll again. He's going down that line of cars. 
headed for the underground entrance. Yeah. Well, that's the last picture we have of him. He spotted the two guards coming down through the terminal. Let's go to camera three. He's somewhere in there. But there are over 200 cars in that garage. And you lost him. Yes, we lost him. It does you good to get out with people. And you'll have fun at the game tomorrow. I promise. Mm -hmm. Who's this? Ben Cushing? NTSB? It's nothing. It's just the guy I met the other day. Don't look like that. I told you, nightmares are over. Come on. Jason? Jason? Honey, what's wrong? Jason? <laughs>
Susie, this is really getting out of control. I mean, I don't know how to deal with this. Neither do I. Now, look, you're going to have to go to a doctor or a psychiatrist or something. It isn't like that, you. Jason. This is, this is something else. This is different. Something is actually happening to me. Yeah. Look, I know you don't believe in these things, but I can't help that. I think these are psychic events. Susie, I don't know how to talk to you anymore. I just don't. to go talk to your friends. Right. There you go. Thank you. I'm gonna set you free. There you go. Once the motorhome started to move again, you didn't see anything more? No. So, Susie, I gotta ask you something. I don't want you to get alarmed. What? Do you own a striped yellow dress? No. Oh, no. No. The girl wasn't me. I'm sure of it. What made you ask that? I just keep wondering if these visions of yours are some kind of warning. I mean, it just seems that way. You didn't have anything to do with that plane. What really bothers me is the bald man. On the day of the crash, we have a bald man on videotape escaping from the airport guards. Right now, he's the only suspect I've got. And obviously, there is some kind of connection between the two of you. I don't even want to think of this. Oh, I know, but we have to. Um, I don't understand what you mean. Look, I talked to John Povey this morning. Uh, he takes it one step further. He thinks that these, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, the precognitive audio-visual hallucinations really mean what he called a lifeline intercept. Your paths will cross.
Miss Izzy. Wait. Well, slow down, slow down. Ben, that's what it means. I know it. He gave blood and he had to give his ID. I mean, I'm sure of it. Bloodmobile? There were people after him. And he was trying to escape. Of course. Of course. Okay, Susie, thank you. Just leave it with me and I'll get back to you later. Okay. Something up? Yeah, you bet there is. Come with me. Hold it, hold it. Now, you see? You see, he got inside the van just before it started to move again. He got a ride out of there. All it cost him was a pint of blood. Can you make out what it says on the side there? Uh, give a pint, save a life. Unit yeah, number... Anybody can read that. It's a bloodmobile. Now, this down here. Uh, St. Something Hospital. Is that an A? Andrews. St. Andrews Hospital. That's it. Thank you. to the donors, so get over to St. Andrews and use your charm. Date of the crash, Bloodmobile 3, last name on that list is our man. Hello? Hi, Susie, it's Ben. Oh, hi, Ben. We're getting a trace on the donor. Um, is there, is there anything else you can think of right now? No. Only what I told you. Well, I'll keep on digging. Is there, uh, is there any chance of our getting together for a drink tonight? What? Ben, there's a... There's a picture. No, a, a poster. I remember seeing a poster. What? What kind of poster? Where'd you see it? I've seen it a number of times. A girl smiling. It's a billboard of some kind. Preen. She advertises for Preen Cosmetics. I, I, I keep seeing her all the time. I know it's important. Oh, um, I have to go now. I'll, I'll call you back, okay? Hi. Hi. What are you doing home? I forgot some sketches. You were uh, talking to that guy from the airlines, weren't you? Why? Because he's helping me. Is that all he's doing? Lady. 28. 
28, 2A. What's the matter with you? Can't you read? Let me off this bus. Let me off, please. I gotta get off this bus. Stop the bus now! Please. Next time, why don't you read the signs, all right? everything you told us, Susie. The Sergeant Muskie here says that there was nothing in the alley. Now, his men kicked up a regular storm searching the place. They came up with zilch, zero. A lot of rubble, but no bodies were found there tonight. It's, it's impossible. I saw her. She was dead. You don't think I imagined it 
are my own clothes. Now calm down, Susie. Take it easy. Look, I was not mugged. Impossible, is it? A young little thing like you? I came as quick as I could. Are you all right? Did he hurt you? No. You better take care of her, fellow. She's much too pretty to run around dark alleys by herself. How was that girl in that hamburger ad? You know, the one who pops out with that bun all around her and the gray legs? Yeah, that's right. Hold it. I think I hear now. Yeah, sir, I'll call you back. What's going on? This is Ben. Ben, this is Jason. Look, where were you? I've been crazy. Something pretty terrible has happened. Yeah. Well, it's 10.30. I've been waiting for you for four hours. For crying out loud, the girl is just... Look, do you mind? I'm not talking to you. Susie. Now, you could have called me. I've been waiting by the telephone. Take it easy. Please, Look, why don't you get the hell out of here? Nobody is talking to you. Please, Ben. Jason. I mean it. Please. You sure? Yeah. OK. You know where to get me if you need me. What does that mean? talking to you. Now, don't walk away from me. Now, I want to know what is happening here. Why did you bring him here? You hear me? You're acting like a fool. Well, what am I supposed to do? I mean, you call him every day. You see him every day. For all I know, you're probably making it with him every day. Are you? I won't even answer an asinine question like that. I was nearly killed today. I am not going to be able to take it if you start shouting and breaking things. What do you mean you were nearly killed? Is it so complicated that only a genius like that moron can understand? Susie, look, I can't take much more of this. I really can't. Now, half the time you're acting crazy. Shh, yep. What? He's here. Who is? Who is here? He's in the building. He's come, Jason. Who has? The bald man. He's in the building. I know it. Somewhere in the corridors. Oh, Jason. Jason, he's coming closer. What are you doing? You're not going out there, are you? Jason, you can't go out there. Now look, I'm going to check this out once and for all. Now just lock the door behind Please, you. Please, Jason, no! You can't go out there! Lock the door.
Susie, open up, it's me. Come on, Susie, open up. Everything's okay. Open up, Susie. Me. Susie. It's me. Can't you hear my voice? Open up. Nothing. Not a damn thing. All you heard was some door blowing in the wind. He wasn't. Now I looked. I looked upstairs. I looked downstairs. I looked everywhere. There was nobody. He was here. You have to believe me. Well, I don't. What are you doing together, Jason? I haven't a clue. I really don't. Come on. Let's not make a big deal out of it. I shouted. I'm sorry. A number to radio taxis, please. Is there an address, or do I just keep driving into the river? Please just drive. I need time to think. You're the boss. Stop at the next phone booth, please. What's the matter? Came to the apartment. Bald man. Knows where I live. Are you all right? No, I'm terrified. Well, look, you just stay right where you are, and I'll be right over. Well, I'm, I, I'm not home. I mean, I took a cab. I'm in a telephone booth. I, I left Jason. You left Jason? I'm on 18th and Cedar. 
right back in that cab and you come here, do you hear me? Yes, I'll come <laughs> Susie? Susie? Susie, are you there, Susie? Susie, answer me. What's happening? Susie? Hello? Susie? Susie, are you all right? Ben. I'm getting stonewalled down here by red tape. The administrator. Mrs. Winterspoon won't give me access to the data processing without a court order. All right, uh, you get down to the DA's office and you get one, and then I'll meet you at the hospital. Cushing, they sent me up here. I'm expecting a Ted Beasley to meet me in um, Mrs. Winterspoon's office. I'm sorry she's gone for the day. Where can I make a phone call from? It's right over there. Mr. Cushing, I have the hospital manager on the line for you. Hello. I'm sorry to disturb you at this hour, but it is urgent that I see your Mrs. Winterspoon. Could you please have her come down to the hospital? some bad news. Open your mouth. Looks like it's gonna rain. I used to like to play in the rain when I was a kid. I like it. You 
You saw me kill that girl. That slut. It always seems to turn out the same. I knew an airline stewardess once. She was very sexy. <laughs> And, you know, I treated that girl very nicely. I treated her very nicely. But she was not nice. And so I blew that little girl to pieces. The thing is, Susie, I've never understood why girls don't like me. I like girls. I like making love very much. I... I'm a good lover. You'll find that out soon enough. My name is Stephen. I'm a third generation American. And I was wondering, could you love me? Mr. Cushing. Good morning, Mrs. Winterspoon. I hope this is important. I understand you have a court order. Well, my assistant is on his way over with it. Uh, may I please have that uh, release, Mr. Uh, Boggs. Boggs? Boggs, yes. Uh, would you please sign this for Mr. Boggs? I have to get an address from the data processing office. When I have the court order in my hand, I will sign the release. You mean you won't sign it until the court order gets here? When I have the court order in my hand, I will sign the release. You're refusing to sign it? When I have the court order in my hand, I will sign the release. Wrong. You are 100% wrong, Mrs. Winterspoon. You will sign it, and you will hand it to Mr. Boggs, and you will do it this instant, because if you don't, Mrs. Winterspoon, I am going to become violent. You're my witness that I signed this under duress. Yes, 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 you signed it under duress. Let's go. I'll go away soon. Let this fade away. I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. You're so lovely. Please, what? Don't speak. Don't speak. I want you to wash yourself nice and clean for me. I think it's nice to be clean, don't you? But don't 
don't try to run away. Because if you do, I'll have to punish you. I'll be back soon. I have to go away. I won't be gone long, so don't get jealous. Hey, Ted, in here. I think I broke a few hundred speed laws. The DA's office wasn't too pleased with their early morning phone calls either. Yeah, I'll take the papers to administration and give them to a very upset lady, and then meet me back here. Stephen Gerstead, 122 Weather Street. Get on to the police and get him over there.
Susie. It's all right. Everything's all right. Stand back from the door. Stand back. Oh. I thought I'd be too late. I thought I'd never see you again.